Hello and welcome to the next screencast in our series, Searching Unions Online Databases. In our previous screencast, we talked about finding the right databases, and this was in particular for our students in the School of Education. In this screencast, we'll talk about using Google Scholar, a tool that I think you'll see is going to be very powerful when it comes to finding those great articles. The third screencast later, we'll be putting it all together, and then we'll end with digging even deeper, finding those resources that are sometimes difficult to get. First, I want to show you how Google Scholar works and interacts with unions databases and other resources. In our first screencast, we talked about that Union has a collection of databases. Of course, they have databases for all of the disciplines on campus. And so in particular for education, the librarians recommend ERIC, Professional Collection, Wilson Webb, Academic One File, and Academic Search Premier. What we're going to talk about today, though, is a different tool that's separate from Union's databases but does interact with the databases, and that is Google Scholar. Google Scholar is a product of Google, and I'll show you in just a moment how to hit the exact Scholar website or search engine, and then how to make it talk back and forth with Union's databases. What's going to happen with Google Scholar is it's actually going to search all of those databases at the same time with one search. The other thing Google Scholar is going to do at the same time is search other universities that might make certain articles and resources available. And finally, Google Scholar is also going to search the entire web looking for academic scholarly journals and bringing those available to you. And so you can tell just from that graphic that Google Scholar is really going to be in some ways a preeminent search engine. And you can see also how limiting a student would be if they only, for example, go into the ERIC database or maybe they only look in Wilson Webb because they're really limiting themselves where Google Scholar is going to conduct a more comprehensive search than any of the databases by themselves. One thing I want to point out is that Google Scholar communicates with Union's databases through that tool we saw earlier in the first screencast which we call the Link Resolver. So the Link Resolver is this piece of software that talks back and forth with all the databases. It's almost like the go-between between Google Scholar and the databases and helps determine if there is some availability of these articles within Union's databases. Remember there's two levels of availability. One level is citation only where you simply get you know what you look at as the parts of a reference uh, entry you know the author's names, the year, the title, the journal but it doesn't actually have the article so that's citation only and then the other level of, of availability would be obviously the full text either the HTML version which would be the less preferred option or the PDF version which would be the preferred option. But this graphic kind of tries to show all the different uh, levels of communication, all, all the different directions of communication, and you can tell I'm trying to communicate the idea that Google Scholar is a terrific beginning place because it's going to point in all those directions at the same time. So let's get started with Google Scholar. I'm beginning here with just the regular Google search engine, and this is not going to be the place to start. Instead, we're going to go to the specific product called Google Scholar. It's under the More tab, located here at the top of the screen, so you'll click More. It's none of the options that come up by default, and so you have to click Even More. From this screen, we're going to scroll down through all these Google-oriented products, and we're going to find the one here under Specialized Search. Under Specialized Search, you'll notice there is Scholar, where we're searching scholarly papers. That's Google Scholar. You don't have to go through all that every time. If you want to just take a note of the website, this directly can be accessed from scholar.google.com. Uh, it also might be a good one to save as a favorite. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up my Google Scholar to interact with Union's databases. If you're on campus, you never have to do this because Google Scholar has already been programmed to work with Union's databases. But if you're off campus or on your personal laptop, you're going to need to take care of this before you really do the searches. We're going to begin by clicking the Settings option in the upper right hand corner. Under Settings, there's three links on the left hand side. 
uh, the search results link, you can kind of just take a look at that and see which one you might like. And we're going to look at this third one for library links. When you click library links, it opens up a search box and the cursor is blinking. It's ready for you to enter some data. You'll notice that it's already set up to search uh, Open WorldCat, the uh, World Catalog. But what I really want to do is I want to set this up to also search at Unions databases. And so it's asking you or prompting you to type in your university name. I'll type in Union University and then hit the search option. Inside the search option here, I want the one that is Union University Summer Library Full Text at Union University. And so I'm going to click right there and then click Save. Now what's happening is as I type key terms into the search engine, it's not only going to search the other universities and the web, by default it would have done that, it's now going to search inside Union's databases and see where I might have some full text availability from the university. Let me just keep the very same search term I've been working with before, standards based grading. and search. One of the first things you'll notice is it's kind of like a regular uh, return that you would expect on a Google search. And so it lists all of these different links as you go down the page. And then on the right hand side though, this is a new part. It actually is telling me where some of these PDFs might be available. And these are going to be areas outside Union University here at this uh, option under uh, standards based grading and reporting a model for special education this is actually the first time that it does find an article in this list that is available with full text at Union University and so this link right here is the one that's telling me I can get that from the university the only way it even knew to check that was that I inserted Union as one of the library links from that previous page and changed that setting Let's go ahead and see what this article looks like finding this at Union. I'm going to click that article. Notice I clicked the link that said full text at Union. And now this is a page that I'm pretty familiar with. This is the link resolver. And so this is where Google has pointed me through the link resolver to Union. And now at this point, it's indicating that I could search for this article in both OmniWeb and Academic Search Premier. I'm going to now click the link that's labeled article. Notice, since I'm off campus, it is prompting me to put in my credentials. This is also always a good sign because it lets me know I'm looking in the right spot and it's prompting me to identify myself as a union faculty member or student. And so, here's the article. I actually found it from Google Scholar but I'm able to access it because it's in one of Union's databases. This is nice because it looks like it's going to have the full text option, the PDF version, and so I could click that and already have this particular article. I'm now back on my results page and let me share a little bit of information about what uh, particularly our librarians consider to be some limitations of Google Scholar. Uh, one of those is that we don't exactly know the algorithm that Google Scholar uses in order to conduct its searches. And so it's possible that it's missing some things that we could have found them in a databases. Uh, ultimately, the bottom line is it's not the end all be all when it comes to doing a, a very comprehensive lit review. It's just a great starting point. The other thing that's a little strange about Google Scholar is we don't really know how these particular results are sorted, why they're sorted this way. It says over here on the link that they are sorted by relevance, and then you could change that to be sorted by date, particularly if you wanted to sort where the more recent articles came to the top. But even sorted by relevance, uh, we don't really know for sure why this article is the very first one listed, or this one is the second one listed, or this one's the third one listed. Uh, so you have to kind of dig around and make sure you're looking through a lot of the results because um, it's possible something that you really could use might be buried on one of the other pages from their search results. What I want to try now is, let's see what happens by clicking the PDF option here from albany.edu. So this is actually taking me to this particular article, which is not something that was found 
in unions databases. And so by means of Google Scholar, I'm able to pull an article, looks like a magazine article from Education Leadership, from another university's database that I wouldn't have had access if I was limiting myself to only unions online resources. One more thing I want to show you about Google Scholar that can be really nice is the links here under the entry for every single article. You'll notice this first link, this particular one says it's cited by 13. That means that there's 13 other articles that came after this article but they cited this particular one. It lets you know a little bit about the popularity of the article that you're looking for. But by virtue of it being a link, you can click that link and it brings you up the 13 articles that have cited the article that you found earlier. What this means is this is now allowing me to take an article that was a good fit for my review of literature and search other articles that also seem to be a good fit because they use this as one of their references. Just like every Google Scholar page, I have all these links on the right hand side telling me how I can possibly get that article. There's also a link for related article, all 39, uh, 38 versions, and so some of these others might be helpful in finding some related articles. We're going to really use that uh, in particular in our fourth screencast when we talk about digging even deeper. One more thing I want to point out about the Google Scholar screen is there are some articles that are pulled here in the results, but there's no link in the right hand column that explains how to get that. For example, this very last one here says grading and reporting student progress in the age of standards. You'll notice it's a book and it doesn't show that it's available at Union. And so one of the things that I can do with this article, is I, or rather this book, is I can click more and you'll notice the option for a library search. What that's doing is it's finding libraries relatively close to Union where this particular book is indeed found. And so it looks like the closest option would be at Murray State University. This book is also held by Treveca, MTSU, and then it gets a little further out from there. But it gives you the options where if you ex absolutely had to have a certain resource but it wasn't available in our library, you could find it somewhere else in another library. Of course, if you're going to take advantage of interlibrary loan, they could possibly get that book for you at Union, even though it's not one of uh, uh, the items in Union's collection. Earlier I mentioned on the left hand side some of the uh, different options to sort, it's by default sorting by uh, relevance, but if I click the option sort by date, it's going to bring up the most recent articles at the top. You can tell this PDF, Standards Based Assessment and Reporting, was posted 25 days ago. And so here's one from 41 days ago, 51 days ago. So it's really an opportunity to find some of the most current things and uh, let's try this one here from liberty.edu. Looks like this is going to be a dissertation from Liberty University, so it's not going to be the typical scholarly journal out of a peer-reviewed publication, but for some folks who are doing certain research, this might be very, very helpful. Really nice to have the whole full-text dissertation right here from one click. The last thing that I'd like to show about Google Scholar is this on the very left hand side you see the little icon with the envelope says create alert and what this does this is a nice feature within Google where you can actually take your search topic which I have listed as standards based grading and create an alert for that particular topic what's going to happen is every time a new scholarly paper is put within Google Scholar then you're going to get an email that alerts you that one has been added to this particular search engine and so by clicking create alert by default that's my email obviously I could change that if I wanted to be my union email or another email address but create alert means that every time standards based grading is added to where Google Scholar can find it, I'll get an email notifying me of that. I can create another alert by, with some other you know, modification of those keywords, another alert, another alert. So I could build several alerts here and if I'm going to be conducting my research for a long term uh, then what's going to happen is it's going to be notifying me all the time as new resources become available. That's obviously a very powerful tool for our students who are doing really nice comprehensive reviews of literature. Uh, it's going to be notifying me when something's been posted that I could potentially use for my paper. 
So this has been an overview about Google Scholar. You've seen how it actually interacts with our databases on campus uh, in our library and then also how it interacts beyond that. And uh, our next screencast is going to be putting it all together. We're going to pick a new topic and work through an entire search, finding everything we can uh, using all the tools available to us.